This is the safe room Well showed me. The one with the altered item inside. Great. More clocks. is that?
why'd they keep an altered item here? Debrief for mirror excursion. Debrief for mirror excursion 7C. Subject is Agent Hardy. Hardy spent approximately three hours in the mirror. It's the longest time on record. Can you describe your experience inside Agent Hardy? Agent Hardy is physically healthy. All tests have come back clean. Yet the speech issue has persisted for hours. Calm down, Agent. It could be psychosomatic, but the fact that this only occurred after returning from the mirror makes a paranatural explanation more likely. I recommend a battery of tests and a class orange quarantine. 7C, subject is Agent Hardy. Hardy spent approximately three hours in the mirror. The longest time on record. Can you describe your experience inside Agent Hardy? <laughs> Way to lock something up. Wait, that didn't sound right. Yeah, that's not good. What? I can't understand you. You need to listen. I saw something in there. There is something inside. You need to lock down the mirror. Why are you talking like that? What's wrong with you? All of you? There's something in that fucking mirror! Did you see that? Someone's in there. I'm not if he's such a That's not good.
pale imitation. Another one? doing with this thing. Well, it's cleansed now. This is gone. It's dealt with. gotten in here too all right let's go cleaning she said cocking her gun
Look alive. Director on deck. Yes, I just take a seat. This is what being a janitor is all about. I suppose the janitor's assistant does need proper janitor attire. Down here. This place is fucking weird. This I finished synthesizing the samples. Now that's weird. What's weird about Ingest this pill, then go and find the source of the mole. Only there can we begin to understand how to stop it. So you promise I won't end up walking around covered in mold? Oh, the pill will prevent any biological infection by the mold. Take a mystery pill because a rude lady in a hazmat suit tells you to. Great idea, Jesse. Ugh. Honestly, did you want me to wrap it in cheese? Not the taste, the smell. It stinks in here now. Good. That means the pill is working. The worse it smells, the safer you'll be. Now go. Find the source. Have you worked with Emily Pope? Our paths have crossed. Darling arranged for us to have a coffee. A meeting of the minds, he called it. She's talented. I can certainly see her doing well here. I feel like there's a but coming. But she's drunk a bit too much of the Bureau's proverbial Kool-Aid. She shouldn't be afraid to forge ahead on her own. Science is skepticism. Everything must be questioned before the truth can emerge. So, is Darling your boss? If you insist on clinging to such outdated hierarchies, then... Yes. However, I would argue that our fields are too dissimilar for one to manage the other. Of course, Darling would much prefer to find his own miracle solution to the Bureau's fungal frustrations. He always needs to be the hero. 
So tell me again how you came to work at the Bureau? Well, like I said, I was brought in as a special advisor. A temporary position, you see. Although that's not the whole truth. I was employed here for a time, straight out of university. After a decade of admittedly fascinating work in threshold research and regulation, I began to chafe under the bureaucracy. I needed a change. Not that academia was so different. And then the mold happened? About four months ago, yes. Since my departure from the Bureau, they hadn't been able to find my equal in threshold analysis. Darling and I had kept in touch over the years, meeting at conferences and the like. He called me, and I booked a flight. I've never been able to say no to a man with a dangerous alien biosphere. <laughs> I had to leave my post in the middle of term, but so be it. So she's a professor. That explains a lot. The mold seems to be having some weird effects on things. Indeed. Even people are susceptible. The fungus grows rapidly within the chest cavity, killing the host. Luckily, one must ingest the stalks to become infected. Don't eat the mold. Okay. We've always cremated the infected bodies after autopsy, but I believe there may be another stage of maturity. A blooming, if you will. I never thought the word blooming would sound so horrible. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Captain Lopez, Squad Captain Lopez, reporting on Expedition 17B. At the formation now, visually no distinction from the previous visit. The link detectors are still standing. One arch has a light flashing, so we're going to give the area once over. Then we'll head back. Lopez out. Reporting on Expedition 17B. At the formation now. <laughs> There are so many. You're listening. Get out. No!
stop being surprised by all the weird shit in this place. Ramsey, Ranger Captain, Node 7.25. Underhill sent us down this weird-ass threshold looking for whatever's making all these vegetables sprout. I will say this, um, it smells delicious. Captain, Node 7.25. Set us down with me. I see. And you're not sprouting mold from your eyes. I take it that means my pill worked. Now tell me everything. Did you find the source? You did, didn't you? I found a big angry plant. Like, gigantic. I killed it. You killed it? You found the source and you killed it? I could have learned so much from a live specimen. Her concern is touching. Really, it's too much. Here, I brought you a sample. A piece of the innermost mold. You're not such a lost cause after all. Strange. So different, even superficially. Another stage of growth, perhaps. Please, no more stages. You'll be pleased to know that cutting down the creature at the source has already resulted in a notable cessation of the mold's rapid growth. You've bought me time for further study. So what now? I'm glad you asked. While you were busy in the pit, a number of mold hosts were sighted beyond the threshold. They managed to sneak out without the rangers noticing. There's a reason I didn't send Steve and Andy to find the mold source with the others. These vagrant hosts must be eradicated as soon as possible. The mold can still be spread by their overgrown bodies. Any idea where they went? The hosts I've observed are not a sprightly bunch. Here are the reports I've received. They'll help you find them. I'll go take care of them. Good. And do be quick about it. There's a nice way to say that. Thanks for the information. My pleasure.
that ring. It's an easy choice, no choice. It's there now. Protecting the most important thing. If I'm coming, I'll be there inside.
Found the hosts. They won't be spreading any more mold. Well done. I'll send burn teams to sanitize the locations. I'm beginning to wonder if these hosts are originating outside the threshold in independent patches of mold growth. You don't sound very optimistic. Optimism is for farmers, as my mother always said. I suppose you could now return to that hiss business you all seem so concerned about. This woman has some incredible tunnel vision. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Thanks for the information. My pleasure. Underhill gave you the new pill, right? Pill? What pill? Don't you dare joke right now. I need the containment protocols for every altered item or object of power with an audio-related effect. I'll send a team to contact Langston and get that information, sir. If he asks why, what do we tell him? Tell him that the hiss worked through sound, so any countermeasures designed for similar altered items should be considered for field use.
I don't think I ever told you this, but I was actually on the path to being a ranger once. Did the whole boot camp thing. Even got rookie status. Anyway, not the point. My own ranger squad was a great bunch. There were six plus me. Remus, Hazard, Cho, Guy, Hepton, Stall, and Thompson. They were supposed to get back from an expedition yesterday. We had beers and wings planned. Problem is, they weren't here when Darling handed out the HRAs. Then they had nothing protecting them from the Hiss. You see, they prep for the worst, but I think that we're already past that. We all wore these pouches around our neck, and I really don't want the Hiss to get them. Could you find them for me? Uh, the squad would have come back through maintenance, but they probably spread out from there. I'll keep an eye out for them, Arish. And I won't let them stay his. What's the deal with Blackrock? Oh, fuck. Don't get me started on Blackrock. You know, ever since research found out that it blocks paranatural stuff, they have just been parading dangerous materials in and out of the fucking quarry. Oh, fucking lab coats, man. Love making my job harder. Sounds like there's some tension between departments. Still, at least the quarry's got a good view of the night sky. You know, me and Salvador used to have after work beers down there. What do you know about Dr. Darling? Uh, about as much as anybody, I guess. Head of research, loves to hear himself talk. All of those science types absolutely do. Uh, now he's been acting a little bit psycho recently. Although HR told me not to use that word, so... Everyone thinks finding Darling will lead us to the answers. But if he's completely lost it, then what help could he be? Your security, right? Do you work with rangers? Not often. Rangers are specially trained in threshold reconnaissance and ground zero AWE response. Security is more interested in the dangers inside the Bureau. They must see some weird stuff out there. Oh yeah, definitely. You know, every week they are tackling things that were previously unknown to the human experience. Most rangers, they retire due to cognitive collapse. I looked up the medical definition. Not fun. How does the Bureau handle thresholds? Handle might be a bit of an optimistic way to put it. Um, Marshall sends a rangers in to map them, check growth rates, locate epicenters, take samples, measure stuff, basically. Sounds like he's done his homework. You know, down in maintenance, thresholds are used just like any other tool. The lab coats mine black rock from one, maintenance siphons water from another. We use it for pretty much everything, except drinking. Why don't you drink it? Do I even want to know? Uh, yeah, a lot of time we find these little chunks in it. It's uh, pretty gross. I didn't want to know. What do you think of Marshall? Marshall? <laughs> Marshall's a fucking badass. Rangers could not ask for a better leader. She's a little, uh, you know, intense, but given the stuff she's seen, I'm not surprised. She does have a bad habit of disappearing, though. Where does she go? Uh, last time she vanished, I did some digging into the security logs. I found camera footage of her entering the quarry. She was down there alone for days. Now, typically that's not allowed, but Marshall is kind of above the rules. I wonder what she finds so interesting in the quarry. I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Remember, we got this. Find the others.
Action for some real action.
coming, though. I should get these back to him. I need the containment protocols for every altered item or object of power with an audio-related effect. I'll send a team to contact Langston and get that information, sir. If he asks why, what do we tell him? Tell him that the hiss worked through sound, so any countermeasures designed for similar altered items should be considered for field use. Here are the pouches. I found... six. Well, that's all of them. Not counting mine. Well, I guess I'll just have to wear all of them. It sounds sappy, I know, but... That's all I can think to do. Nothing's easy with the hiss. Is it rude to ask what's inside? What's inside the pouches? Too late now. Now, the story's confidential, but, uh... Well, I guess I can tell you, being the director and all. So, uh, the Bureau had heard rumors of a werewolf gathering upstate every full moon. Us being rookies, they sent us to confirm it was bullshit. Hold on, is he about to tell me werewolves are real? Turns out, there was an altered item that was creating violent gravitational anomalies during full moons. Oh, man, we nearly bit it that night. Well, to remember the occasion, we all bought silver bullets to wear around our necks. Just in case we ever ran into another werewolf. So why did you leave the rangers? I thought I could do more good here. Somebody's got to protect the people who protect everybody else, right? I have to go. Me too. You're not the only one who's busy, you know. Hi. Do you remember Mr. Tomasi, the head of communications? The hiss he was changed into showed up in containment, near the turntable. I'll take care of it. That thing's not getting away this time. I've heard reports about his particular use of language and intonation when repeating the his babbling. The biological and behavioral distinctions between different his corrupted individuals is truly fascinating. I wonder if I could categorize the data. And she's already off on her own thing. I've been seeing these darling presentations all over. Seems like he enjoys the limelight. So you noticed, huh? When he recruited me out of college, he actually came to visit. He interrupted my physics course by shouting, uh, not quite, professor, and then marching down to the front of the class where he proceeded to berate the very idea of laws of thermodynamics. Hey, he's been a showboat all his life. Darling visited you in college? Yeah, he read a paper I'd published, came to recruit me for the bureau. I accepted and then spent years waiting for access to the confidential research that Darling promised me. And whenever I ask about my access level, he just mumbles that it's temporarily postponed and then changes the subject to the effect of entropy on luck. I wonder who else Darling hit his work from. Marshall? Trench? Have you learned anything about Dylan's condition? Only that he's definitely his, but I guess his chanting made that pretty obvious. You know, interestingly, the words of the his incantation have an average length of four letters. The most common word used seven times is want. The next most common are through and time. That's very interesting, don't you think? I don't care about the words. What about my brother? Right, sorry, I got a little off track. Well, strangely, his tissue samples all look healthy, unlike the other his I've tested. That's good news. Right? 
I wanted to talk to you about the crazy things I can do. My abilities. I get the sense that they're not very usual around here. Well, usual and unusual aren't really benchmarks at the Bureau, but for some perspective, Director Northmore once used the floppy disk to send a bowling ball six yards through the air, and that was considered a huge deal. So compared to that, you are most certainly an outlier. An outlier. I like the sound of that. I should get going. Don't let me hold you up.
the Bureau should start looking for a new head of communications. to America Overnight, now in our 29th year, lifting the veil between fiction and reality. Thank you for staying up with us. I've been getting a lot of calls about this meteor in Sterling, Colorado. There are reports of a large spherical container that crash-landed in a field outside town. Some government people reportedly took it away. Now, we happen to broadcast from Colorado, and Sterling isn't far. I drove down myself to check it out with members of the America Overnight team. I don't need to tell you, it wasn't long before we found pieces of metal debris scattered in a field. Listeners, this is yet another instance of an unidentified flying object, or UFO, entering our airspace and crashing. That the government took away the evidence under cover of darkness only compounds the fact that these are more than likely visitors from beyond our planet, or dare I say, solar system. Head on over to our website to see pictures of the spacecraft pieces we uncovered. And while you're doing that, our sponsors would like your ear. America Overnight will be right back. Listening to America Overnight. Now in our 29th year, lifting the veil. <laughs> I took care of the Tomasi problem. Sorry, I forget he was a co-worker. Don't apologize. That wasn't the real Tomasi. He died when the hiss got him. You're right. I just didn't want to be insensitive. Sentimentality is a weakness in situations like these, Jesse. That's Bureau 101. I don't think Emily's in danger of being called sentimental. I should get going. Don't let me hold you up.
This is Lynn Salvador. This is Lynn Salvador, head of Bureau Security. I'm making a formal security order due to the incident in April, case number 21HQ593. Improper use of the jukebox altered item led to two fatalities. We believe a pair of agents used the jukebox to travel to the quarry threshold and engage in inappropriate workplace behavior. An expedition team found them decomposing at the formation's base a week later. At least we found out the jukebox doesn't bring corpses back when the song ends. I'm having the jukebox placed in a secure location in the executive sector. It should never have been accessible to low clearance staff in the first place. The new location's security and proximity to a high traffic area will prevent misuse while still allowing for expedition teams to access it when required. See me for any further details. The Bureau of Security. I'm making a formal